You're lying on the operating table, surrounded by the bustle of doctors, and in the next second, nothing. The world simply vanishes. No dreams, no sense of time, not even the feeling of your own body. Then, as if by the snap of fingers, you come back. Harsh light from the lamps, nurses' voices, and the clock shows that hours have passed. So where does our sense of self go in that moment? What really happens to our consciousness under anesthesia? This isn't just a simple blackout. It's a profound mystery that's got scientists scratching their heads about what makes us who we are. Imagine your mind as a vast ocean, teeming with waves of thoughts and sensations, and suddenly someone hits the pause button. The waves freeze, but the ocean remains. Let's dive into this enigma step by step to uncover how medicine tinkers with our most intimate core, our perception of reality. We'll explore the mechanisms behind it, real patient stories, groundbreaking scientific discoveries, and even some philosophical puzzles that might make you see your own mind in a whole new light. A lot of people assume anesthesia is like a deep sleep where the brain just rests and recharges. But in reality, it's something far more intricate and sophisticated. A controlled dive into a state where consciousness temporarily switches off, while the body and brain keep running at a basic level, sustaining all the vital functions. Anesthetics, these specialized drugs honed over decades of research, don't fully paralyze the brain or cause any kind of death or even a temporary shutdown. Instead, they disrupt the communication between different brain regions, creating an effect similar to cutting the internet in a global network. Let's picture the brain as a massive metropolis, buzzing with noise and motion. Neurons are the cars racing down the streets, and electrical signals are their routes, shuttling information from one neighborhood to another. In a normal state, this city thrives, thoughts flash like neon lights, emotions surge like crowds in the main square, sensations flow seamlessly from district to district, piecing together a unified view of the world. But under anesthetics, the traffic lights go out one by one, signals grind to a halt, connections break, and the metropolis turns into a silent, still landscape where the streets are empty and the buildings stand quiet. The brain stays alive, your heart beats steadily, lungs dry in fresh air, cells keep exchanging nutrients, but it stops being a cohesive whole, losing its ability to integrate information. This isn't about destroying the infrastructure, it's just a carefully timed pause in the flow, designed so surgeons can work without interference. As the drugs wear off, the lights flicker back on. Traffic resumes, and the city springs back to its chaotic yet harmonious rhythm. That's why anesthesia is so safe and effective. It doesn't damage the brain's roads, it just halts the traffic temporarily, allowing for the body's repairs. Without this mechanism, countless surgeries, from simple appendix removals to complex organ transplants, would be impossible and it opens the door to understanding how our minds teeter on the edge between activity and stillness. Interestingly, the first anesthetics, like ether in the 19th century, were discovered by accident during gas experiments, and their use revolutionized medicine, turning operations from sheer torture into everyday procedures. Today, anesthesiologists tailor drug combinations to each patient, factoring in age, weight, and even genetics to cut down risks and ensure a smooth journey into oblivion. Now, think about how we wake up after this deep immersion. You open your eyes and it feels like only a moment has passed, even though the clock shows hours, or even days for longer procedures. This phenomenon of instant return is stunning in its elegance. The brain can completely shut down for an extended period and snap back to the exact same state, as if nothing happened, with no data loss or confusion. Our consciousness isn't some fixed object tucked away in the head like a precious gem. It's a dynamic network woven from billions of neuronal interactions, like a web spun from electrical pulses. When anesthesia severs those links, the self simply dissipates, like mist evaporating in the sun, melting into timelessness.
but as soon as the signals reconnect, the network reassembles. Memories surface from the depths, emotions spark back to life, sensations slot back into place, recreating a whole picture. Compare it to a computer in sleep mode. All the data on the hard drive is intact and ready. Programs are primed to launch at any time, but the screen's dark and the processor is idle, saving power. Hit the button and boom, the system revives, picking up right where it left off. No reboot or lost progress needed. In the same way, the brain under anesthesia preserves everything, your childhood memories, driving skills, even your sense of identity, who you are in this world. When you wake, you don't notice the gap because time stood still for your consciousness, like in a black hole where seconds stretch into eternity for you, but the outside world ticks on normally. It's an incredible evolutionary trick. The brain conserves energy by skipping unnecessary processes during surgery and reboots instantly once it's over, easing the body's stress. Studies show that special neurotransmitters like acetylcholine kick in at that moment to help reset the network, and patients often feel refreshed despite the procedure. But imagine if this didn't exist. Waking up could be chaotic with memory lapses or disorientation, like after an electric shock. These qualities make anesthesia not just a life-saving tool, but a blueprint for studying how our minds adapt to extreme situations, from space travel to treating mental disorders. Let's recall a bit of history. In 1846, William Morton first used ether for a painless surgery, and the patient woke up in disbelief that it was already done. This breakthrough forever changed the face of medicine. However, things don't always go perfectly, and that ideal scenario can crack. In rare but unforgettable cases, the consciousness switch malfunctions, leading to something truly terrifying. Intraoperative awareness, or as it's also known, awareness under anesthesia. This is when the anesthesia paralyzes the body, leaving it as motionless as a statue, but the brain stays alert. You hear the surgeons chatting about the weather or their evening plans, feel the tools touching your skin, even the sharp pain of incisions, yet you can't move, open your eyes, or call for help, screaming silently in your mind. Statistics show this happens in about 1 in 19,000 to 20,000 operations, though the exact numbers vary based on the type of anesthesia, procedure length, and patient factors. It's more common in women, young people, or emergency cases. For most, it's just brief flashes of reality, but for some, it's a full-blown nightmare stretching over minutes or hours. The chill of metal on skin, the pressure of a scalpel slicing through tissue, the antiseptic scent mixed with blood, all in total immobility, trapped in your own body, where every breath is a fight to stay calm. One patient who went through this during a C-section in the 1990s later shared in an interview, I heard the doctors joking about football, felt every cut into my abdomen, but my mouth was sealed shut and my body was like stone encased in concrete. I screamed in my head, begged for help, counted the seconds to keep from going insane, but no one heard. It was worse than death. Another story comes from Carolyn Jessup's book, Awareness, where she describes feeling every thud of the instruments during heart surgery, battling sheer panic. Experiences like these leave lasting scars, post-traumatic stress disorder with recurring nightmares, insomnia where every dream replays the horror, lifelong fear of doctors and hospitals, sometimes spiraling into depression or even suicidal thoughts. Why does this occur? The reasons lie in individual body quirks. Some people metabolize drugs faster, flushing them out. Others have genetic or lifestyle-based resistance to anesthetics. Or it could be a simple dosing error, especially under pressure. Brain monitoring via electroencephalogram or bispectral index helps reduce risks by tracking anesthesia depth in real time. But scientists admit we don't fully grasp why consciousness sometimes slips through the cracks, like a ghost in the machine. 
It's a stark reminder that even in modern medicine, with all its high-tech gadgets, there are corners where science meets the unknown, and every patient is a unique variable in the equation, demanding a tailored approach. Projects like AWARE aim to document these incidents by surveying thousands of patients, paving the way for better protocols and prevention strategies. Despite these uncommon risks, anesthesia serves as a real key to unlocking the secrets of consciousness itself, swinging open doors into the mazes of the human mind. By examining how anesthetics turn us off with such precision, researchers peer into the very mechanisms that make us thinking, feeling beings. One of the biggest breakthroughs in recent decades is the role of the thalamocortical network, the link between the thalamus, which acts as a central hub for signals, filtering and distributing info, and the cerebral cortex, where thoughts, sensations, and decisions get processed. Anesthetics block this link halting the flow of information like a dam stopping a river. The brain keeps operating locally. Neurons fire pulses in isolated areas, maintaining basic functions, but without the global integration that glues everything into a single self. As a result, sensations don't merge into a coherent picture. There's no I watching the world, analyzing events, or planning ahead. It's like an orchestra, where musicians play their parts in separate rooms without a conductor. Chaos instead of symphony, noise instead of music. Functional Magnetic Resonance Imaging FMRI studies reveal that under anesthesia, activity in these zones plummets, while other brain parts handling breathing, heartbeat, or reflexes stay normal, ensuring survival. These insights not only refine anesthesia to make it even safer, but also aid in treating consciousness disorders like coma, vegetative states, or epilepsy, where similar connection breakdowns lead to a loss of self. For instance, animal experiments have let scientists flip consciousness on and off by tweaking specific neurons, opening doors to new therapies for mental illnesses. What's more, this ties into consciousness theories, like Giulio Tononi's Integrated Information Theory, which posits that consciousness is a measure of how complexly data integrates in the brain. Anesthesia thus becomes a lab tool for testing these ideas on humans in an ethical, controlled way. Ultimately, it teaches us that consciousness isn't a static thing hidden in the skull, but an ongoing process that can be paused and restarted, unveiling new frontiers in neuroscience and even artificial intelligence, where similar models help build dormant AI. Finally, let's ponder the deeper, almost metaphysical implications. Anesthesia lays bare the fragility of our self in full, forcing us to rethink who we truly are. We get used to seeing ourselves as a stable, unchanging hub of the universe with an endless stream of thoughts and feelings, but a single needle prick can erase our awareness of the world, time, even our own body, plunging us into absolute void. Then everything snaps back just as clear and vivid as before. This sparks philosophical questions echoing through the ages. Is consciousness merely a delicate tuning of billions of electrical pulses? A fleeting illusion crafted by the brain? Or does our self exist somewhere beyond the physical brain, in some transcendent realm, waiting for a signal to return, like the soul in religious teachings? Plato spoke of the soul as an immortal pilot of the body, and Descartes declared, I think, therefore I am. But anesthesia challenges these notions, showing that thought can be chemically suspended. Anesthesia is both a medical marvel that spared millions from pain and suffering and one of humanity's greatest riddles, on par with the mysteries of death or dreams. It reveals how razor thin the line is between existence and non-existence. You can cross it with just a few milligrams of substance injected into a vein and come back without a trace. But the big question lingers hanging in the air. If consciousness can be switched off like a light bulb in a room, then who or what exactly controls that switch? Chemistry, evolution, or something greater? 
These thoughts aren't just frightening in their depth, stirring an existential shiver, but they also inspire exploration, urging scientists and philosophers to keep probing. In the end, grasping anesthesia brings us closer to unraveling the essence of the human mind, drawing us nearer to answers about life, consciousness, and our place in the cosmos. And have you ever wondered what happens to yourself in those moments when you're asleep or meditating? Anesthesia is just an extreme version, but it reminds us to cherish every waking instant. Thanks for any support you can offer. Leave a comment, subscribe, and hit that like button. It really helps the channel.